Hello. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to wrap a stylized or cartoonish character with minimal cleanup using the new cartoon wrapping node. Let's start with an empty project. I'm going to go over here and click the import button to load my character. This is an awesome character purchased from the Turbo Squid website. You can see that it has very cartoonish proportions. Let me change the shading of the mesh. This character already has a nice animation friendly topology. But let's pretend for our production we need to convert it to a different topology. First, let me go to the subtool section and duplicate our mesh as a new subtool. Now we can go to the tool menu and import a base mesh with the desired topology. In this case, I'm going to use this base mesh that comes with ZWrap. You can also find this under the Lightbox Tools ZWrap folder. OK, here's our base mesh that we want to fit to our cartoonish character. All we need to do is go to Z Plugin, Z Wrap, and click Start Z Wrap. Now let's go to the wrapping step. Let's click the Fast Wrapping button. The wrapping will compute it pretty fast. If we look closer at the results of the wrapping, you can see that there are some artifacts on the lips, on the nostrils, and on the eyes. A manual cleanup of this result would take quite a lot of time. Instead you can use the cartoon wrapping mode. It is a special wrapping method that allows us to stretch and squeeze the mesh so it better fits to cartoonish characters. And now if we look at our result, we can see that the mesh is very clean and it requires almost no cleanup for this model. So now we can click Done. Here is our wrapped result. Compared to the original mesh. Now I will show you how to perform this process even more precisely and with great control. I will click Ctrl Z to get back to our original base mesh. First of all, I want to exclude the eye sockets and the mouth sockets from the wrapping process. We will take advantage of the fact that our base mesh has polygroups. If I use Ctrl Shift Click on any polygon, it will make the corresponding polygroup exclusively visible. In this case, I've isolated the lower eye socket polygroup. If we Ctrl Shift Click on any polygon again, it will invert the visibility. If I click on the upper eye socket polygroup holding Ctrl Shift, it will hide this polygroup too. We can go on hiding the mouth socket polygroups. When we finish, we can select an empty area on the viewport using Ctrl and Shift. This will invert the visibility. Next, we can select all the visible polygroups by clicking on any empty space on the viewport while holding the control key. Finally, we can press control shift click on an empty space to make the entire mesh visible. The selected eye and mouth sockets will be treated as free polygons, meaning that they will not try to fit the target mesh during the wrapping. Now we can run Z wrap again. This time I want to provide some guides on where specific edge loops should go on the target model. To do that, in the previous versions of ZWrap, we would select a number of corresponding control points between the models. But if you want to ensure the exact edge loop placement, it requires too many control points. Instead of doing that, we can use the new Select Splines mode. Let me enable Snapping and also turn on the topological symmetry mode. Now I'm going to select the edge loop that corresponds to the upper right eyelid. I can click here, then press the shift key and move my cursor until the desired edge loop is highlighted. 
Then I can click on the mesh to create a spline. This way I can create the entire upper eyelid spline. To finish drawing the spline, I can press enter or the right mouse button. Then I will use Alt click on the same eyelid corner and while holding the shift key, I can select the lower eyelid spline and click enter. So now you can see that the same two splines were automatically selected on the opposite side of the face. Now let's do the same for our cartoonish character. Let me click W to toggle the wireframe and also let me turn on the snapping mode and topological symmetry here. So I go over here and I'll start selecting the spline while holding the shift key. First I'm going to select the upper eyelid. Then I click enter. Now with Alt click I can start drawing the lower eyelid spline. I can also finish drawing by clicking the right mouse button. All right, we have our eyelid selected. What we can also do is go over here to the lips and select our lip contours. Holding the shift key, I'm going to draw the upper lip spline. And then I click on the same lip corner and create a lower lip spline. Now I'm going to draw corresponding splines for my character. First, let's draw the upper lip contour. Then let's do the same for the lower lip. All right, now that we have the lips and eyelids selected, we can proceed to the wrapping stage. I will open the preferences tab and turn off show labels mode. Let me turn off the wireframe for the target mesh and let's click the cartoon wrapping button again. So this time, cartoon wrapping will wrap the model while also putting our selected splines in the corresponding positions on the target mesh. All right, here's our wrapping result. We can continue and return to the Select Splines mode and draw a few more splines to help the wrapping process. So first, I would like to select the nasolabial fold. Then I'm going to select the same nasolabial fold on my character. Let me turn off the snapping option and move this point to create a nice smooth contour for the nasolabial fold. All right, let's also add a contour for the eyebrows. So again, I hold the shift key and draw an eyebrow contour. Then I can go to my cartoonish character and draw the corresponding eyebrow spline as well. Also, let's select the inner contour for the lower lip. So I can click here and draw the inner spline. Then I can do the same for my character. The last spline I would like to add is my jawline contour. As you can see, there is no edge loop corresponding to the jawline contour, so I'm going to draw it manually. Let's do the same for the character. All right, there we go. Now we can switch to the wrapping mode. Let me turn off the wireframe. Now we can click the cartoon wrapping button again. All right, and here is our wrapped result. Let's click done, and here you can see the final wrap model. So this is how you can have very fine control over the wrapping process. Here is the model in the old topology, and here is the model in the new topology. Please also note that you have absolutely the same functionality in wrap. 
we can click Compute and wait for a few seconds. And now we have the same results that you would have with ZWrap. Alright, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it, and see you in the next video.